right now. Making headlines this morning, more than 600 people have been killed in a powerful earthquake in Turkey and Syria. As many buildings collapse, we're going to update you on the frantic search for survivors. A much warmer start to the work week. Still on the cool side, though, but we have a dense fog advisory, and Mike will show you all the counties that are included in that. And good morning to you. It's Monday, the 6th of February. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend in this morning. Kind of foggy out there. Yeah, you have a hard time of seeing some things out there on almost all of our live cams right now. Not bad down at street level, though, mm. on Trans Sky. Good morning, yeah, Mike. How good, was your weekend? It's fantastic. And hi to everybody that came out for the uh, Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive Saturday morning. I, once again, Houston Street was just lined with folks. Fantastic, pretty chilly, beautiful in the afternoon, gorgeous yesterday. And yeah, the, and the fog really, I mean, just in the past half hour, all of a sudden it's like kind of moved on in. So I have to add in the, uh, the sound effects. So yeah, we do have a dense fog advisory. Not bad right now at the airport, but you can see that kind of fuzz off there in the background. We're 59 degrees here in town. Big difference from over the weekend. And then you've got the dew point temperatures that are just about running neck and neck with the air temperatures. And so that's what's prompting some of this fog. Yeah, not bad at the airport. Then you go down to Port SA. Down a half mile, zero Castroville, quarter mile Hondo, quarter mile up there in New Braunfels, Pleasanton, and then basically going down 35. And that's pretty much where the either side of that, where the dense fog advisory is, all the way from Austin down 35. A couple of counties on the side of that heading down to the southwest toward Eagle Pass up until 10 o'clock this morning. So it is going to be sticking around for a while. We do have Mountain Cedar on the moderate side, mold, <coughs> excuse me. A little frog in my throat this morning is low, and this morning we're going to be staying pretty steady this right now with temperatures in the upper 50s, well above normal by a good uh, 10, 15 degrees on average, and that patchy fog around with a little bit of mist. There's always that chance for some mist with some of this fog. Then 75 for high temperature. Yeah, it's going to be very warm, somewhat on the humid side with this southerly wind that will be breezy as well. We've got some rain chances then. We'll start to move in. A couple of them overnight, especially tomorrow, early Wednesday. Another couple of fronts down the road the rest of the week. Good looking end of the week. What about the upcoming weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. We now know the name of a man shot outside his downtown apartment on Friday evening. That's 34-year-old Omar Richardson. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Now that shooting happened just after 11 p.m. on McCullough Avenue, not far from I-35. And when San Antonio police got there, they found a blood trail which led to Richardson. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Still no word on any arrests. An emergency repair to a water line will not only impact your evening commute tonight, but also water for those who will be near the area. Later today, SAWS crews will be at the intersection of North St. Mary's and Mistletoe working on the repair. There'll be a full road closure from 7 tonight to 6 a.m. tomorrow. There will also be alternative routes available in the area. SAWS officials also say there will be a temporary water outage from 9 tonight through 5 tomorrow morning. In your morning headlines, a major earthquake rocking central Turkey and Syria overnight. Hundreds of people have been killed. The quake was so strong, even the coast of Italy was briefly put on alert for a possible tsunami. Well, now hundreds of people are reportedly trapped beneath rubble across that region. The White House has already announced that assistance is on the way. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, hundreds were confirmed dead overnight. <laughs> This morning, death and destruction in south central Turkey and in neighboring Syria, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake, followed by a series of aftershocks, leaving a rising number of dead and dozens of buildings destroyed. At the top of one building, arcing wires could be seen lighting up the sky. The main tremor felt in at least nine cities. Survivors out of breath and in a daze, searching for loved ones buried in debris. The epicenter in the Turkish city of Karaman Maras, near the border with Syria. So close, the Syrian civil defense declared an emergency, noting the collapse of several residential buildings and activating teams to rescue the stranded and those trapped under the rubble. <laughs> But the damage in Turkey is extensive. Even those whose homes are still standing saw light fixtures sway as debris fell around them. The White House National Security Advisor issuing a statement saying President Biden has directed U.S. aid and other federal government partners to assess U.S. response options. And Turkey's President Erdogan tweeting the quake was felt in many parts of the country, adding search and rescue teams have been immediately dispatched and expressing his hope that we will get through this disaster together.
The death toll between Turkey and Syria is staggering, and search crews are only just beginning to comb through the rubble. Syria's civil defense calling it a catastrophe. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Well, top leaders in both chambers of Congress and key intelligence committee members are getting more information on the suspected Chinese balloon incident. They're expecting a briefing as soon as tomorrow. In addition, a full Senate classified briefing is scheduled for later next week. According to a senior U.S. official, a single missile brought down the balloon Saturday and debris is in about 47 feet of water spread out over seven miles. While President Biden declared the takedown a success, some Republicans say the balloon should have been brought down sooner. The Chinese government issued a statement Sunday expressing, quote, strong dissatisfaction and protest against Washington's actions, adding that the airship was for civilian use and had entered the U.S. airspace by accident. Harry Whittington, an Austin attorney who became the center of international tension back in 2006 after he was shot by then Vice President Dick Cheney in a hunting accident, died over the weekend. Whittington was 95 years old. His death, which followed a short illness, was confirmed by two people close to his family. He helped Texas Republicans rise to power in the second half of the last century. Whittington worked for and supported both George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush in their stints in Texas politics before they became president. Tonight's Powerball jackpot expected to be the fifth largest ever. And since no one matched all six numbers drawn Saturday night, Monday's jackpot estimated $747 million. That would be about $403 million if you choose the lump sum cash option. No one's won Powerball since November 19th. The jackpot is big, but not close to the all-time record just yet. That was $2.4 billion back on November 7th. We're still waiting to find out who bought that lucky ticket in the state of California. And time now, 436 and 58 degrees for now. Up next, the Spurs are officially off on their annual rodeo road trip. Find out what some of the younger team members think about that tradition. Plus, we're going to tell you why Kyrie Irving, Irving is on the move to the Lone Star State. Checking traffic right now. Again, fog could be an issue, especially as you head outside the city of San Antonio. Right now, things look good there at 35 and Loop 410. Taking a look out there with live cam. Can't see a whole bunch of fog in this shot, but it is out there, so be careful on your way out. We'll be right back. It is time for the annual rodeo road trip for the San Antonio Spurs. It's that unique time for the franchise to really bond as a squad and try to improve during the rest of the season. Of course, anything that helps them win games would be welcomed at this point. San Antonio is 2 and 15 since the start of the new year. The last win came January 17th against the Nets and the Spurs have lost eight in a row, including Friday's home loss to the Sixers for the veterans on the Spurs road trip. This is nothing new, but this is a brand new experience for our rookies. Yeah, um, I don't know what to pack. Um, I know I'm probably going to bring like two suitcases and just just ask the guys because, you know, they've been on a rodeo trip. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to pack, but. I'm probably going to start packing tonight. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not my first rodeo trip. Uh, I feel like I've been around for a little bit now. Uh, so for me, I, I want to say I'm, I'm I'm used to it. I just um, I know what what's coming. So yeah, I think obviously like the the fact that we we do go for for dinners and stuff like we have um, we're going to have plenty of opportunities out there in, in all these cities to just um, get the team together and, and and have some fun. So yeah, obviously that helps. So Steph says pack four pairs of jeans and 14 t-shirts and you're golden. Yeah, you can never have too many. Spurs will now play nine straight games on the road. All starts tonight up in Chicago. First half of the road trip features Eastern Conference teams and not one team they face this week is above 500. Spurs matchup with the Bulls starts at 7 o'clock. Malachi is looking forward to seeing the Bulls. DeMar DeRozan. Spurs will then play at Toronto Wednesday night, then at Detroit Friday night, and then close out the week Saturday night at Atlanta versus the Hawks, as the Spurs will reunite with DeJounte Murray for the first time, time since trading him out of here. All right, meanwhile, Kyrie Irving is on the move to the Lone Star State. A shocking trade. Brooklyn traded him to the Dallas Mavericks yesterday for Dorian Finney-Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, and a 2029 first rounder and two second rounders. Irving has played in 40 of the Nets' 52 games this season, where he averaged 27 points per contest. Spurs will face the Mavs on the road, rodeo road trip 
on Thursday, February 23rd. We have to see Pro how football government powered by Davis Law Firm. Now Kyrie uh, meshes with the team there. Yeah. All right, in less than a week now, the NFL will crown a new champion in Super Bowl 57 at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs looking for their franchise's third Super Bowl title. While Jalen Hurts and the Eagles are after their second, both teams have won one title over the last six years and both relying on some of that previous experience to help them prepare. It's nice to have that experience before. I can teach other guys and help them along as well because um, even though we're, it's the same team, we have a lot of new players, and so I'm excited to get these guys down there to get that experience, and at the end of the day, you want to win the game, so I just want to make sure those guys keep that in mind. Just kind of control what you can control, man, and um, put your best foot forward in football, and then uh, let everything else on the outside handle itself, and um, I kind of feel like that's been uh, important just for, for me uh, and a lot of other young guys we've got on our defense is just uh, trying to knock out off the field stuff early uh, just worry about football from here on out. This is the goal. You know, um, this is why we play the game. You know, I'm not playing for individual awards, like playing the game to be the best and to hold that trophy up at the end. Worked really hard to be where we are now, so um, to have the opportunity is, is something that you earn. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's something that you earn, so we want to work really hard to take advantage of it. All right, Super Bowl 57, Chiefs, Eagles, Nachos, Chicken Wings, Sunday, <laughs> 5.30. Philly is favored by only one and a half points. And do you have a pick right now, Stephanie Cerna? I, I was just thinking about that. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I, I, would, I guess I'll go with the Texas guy, you know, Kansas. You know. Kansas City yeah. and Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. That's who I'm going with as well. Wow, there's, a, there's other reasons, but I'm not going to get into oh. right now. It's a long discussion. Maybe over the week we'll hear a little bit about it. Okay, <laughs> sounds like sounds the plan. Uh, 444, 58 degrees. Up next, new details on a scary runway close call in Austin. We're going to tell you about the urgent investigation that's now underway after a near miss between a FedEx cargo jet and a Southwest Airlines plane. And welcome back. It's about 447. And there is new information this morning regarding that near miss between a passenger jet and a cargo plane at the airport in Austin over the weekend. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on that scary runway close call. An urgent federal investigation underway at the Austin airport after what could have been a devastating accident over the weekend. A near miss between a FedEx cargo jet and a Southwest Airlines plane. FedEx 1432, if you are to the land, traffic department prior to around 737. Air traffic control giving FedEx permission to land and soon after giving the okay for Southwest to enter that same runway to take off. Southwest are confirmed on a roll. Roll on now. But less than 30 seconds later, Southwest aboard. FedEx is on the go. Southwest forced to change course. The two planes coming within a mile of one another. So what will investigators be looking at? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. And let's look out there with TransGuide right now, looking over at I-35 at Loop 410. Things are moving, not looking too bad, although there is some fog out there. There was the sound of hatch, uh, hatchets and chainsaws throughout our region over the oh, weekend yeah. as people continue to clean up. But I tell you what, yesterday was a nice break. It was actually warm outside. Okay. Got nice and uh, Saturday afternoon, too. It was pretty mm -hmm. chilly in the morning. Yesterday was cool in the morning, and it's a whole different story now this morning. So uh, nice thing is that we will have a couple of more chances at some rain starting well, maybe a sprinkle or two late tonight uh, and then tomorrow and early on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, boy, a lot of fog. Yeah, we had plenty of it over the weekend, and this is pretty much what you're going to be waking to uh, waking up to this morning. There's sometimes a, a house over there, but again, in some pictures, you don't see a whole lot of fog like out there at the airport, although it's tough to see the uh, control tower as of right now. Visibility is eight miles, but then it's down to a third of a mile Port S.A., uh, Castroville, zero mile and a quarter Randolph, just a quarter up around New Braunfels. So it's almost this swath along 35 from northeast down to southwest. Like I said, Hondo has plenty of fog. Beeville, Victoria as well. Dense fog advisory, kind of the, the middle third of the area, the middle big chunk of the area. And that's up in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. It was just issued. Uh, 
probably half an hour ago. 59 here in town, Balverde, mid 50s, Hill Country, much, much warmer temperatures, of course, than what we had over the weekend. One of the reasons for that is the dew points have come up a good 10, 15, 20, almost 25 degrees compared to this time yesterday. So that much more humidity out there. Help. That's obviously helping out with some of the fog. So temperatures aren't going to be moving this morning. We stay just right where we are. A little bit of sunshine late this morning, although the fog is going to be fairly stubborn. We will make it up into the upper 60s today at noon and then top off at 75. So very warm day, about 10 degrees above normal with some sunshine basically leaning toward the cloudier side. And then as we go on into the overnight hours, a couple of sprinkles are going to try and pop up here overnight and maybe one or two of them hanging around here tomorrow morning, but it's going to be later on in the day when we have a better chance for some rain tomorrow and then especially going into tomorrow night. There's another front that's going to be moving through here and that will also touch off a couple of stronger storms potentially well off to the east. So Storm Prediction Center already has a very small chance for one or two of those to become strong, potentially severe, basically the eastern say half of our area with the greater chance the further east you go and this is going to be primarily late tomorrow late in the afternoon especially tomorrow night and in the wee hours of wednesday night but again most of those are going to be further off to the east of us so the forecast today fog hanging around here this morning is going to be pretty stubborn and then 68 degrees today at noon most of the cloudy skies little bit of sunshine here and there and then 75 high temperature couple of sprinkles are going to be possible tonight and then in the morning. Yeah, maybe one or two of them, but the better chance of rain is going to be then as we move on through the day tomorrow. A couple of thunderstorms as well, and then another front moves through clears us out for Wednesday and then another front kind of on the heels of that sort of a little reinforcing shot of cooler air. So we'll be pretty much normal then latter half of the week, but then getting down to freezing again by Saturday morning. Plenty of clouds hanging around here in through the weekend. Not quite done yet, are we? Nope, which I mean, fine in my book. And then it's nice. Also, we got that rain chance, too. So mm -hmm. that's great. I actually have stuff that looks like grass in my <laughs> yard. So finally, yeah, yes. Thanks, Mike. Right now, 451, 58 degrees. Up next, after seven weeks, a top at the box office. Avatar, the new way of water is no longer number one. Plus how Tony Hawk is trying to help the family of Tyree Nichols. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, zero, one, Fireball, two, daily four, five, zero, nine, three, Fireball, two. Cash five, one, four, 17, 32, 33. Lotto Texas, 16, 26, 30, 31, 37, 44. And your Powerball numbers, two, eight, 15, 19, 58, Powerball 10, Power Play two. Good luck. 455 Tony Hawk shows support for Tyree Nichols and M. Night Shyamalan takes down Avatar. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Dave Packer. Skateboard legend Tony Hawk says he'll donate half the proceeds of autographed photos of himself and BMX rider Rick Thorne to the Tyree Nichols Memorial Fund. The money will also be used to build a skate park in his name. The photos can be purchased online for $30. A thousand copies will be available. Nichols, an avid skateboarder, FedEx worker, and father, died last month after being beaten by police during a traffic stop. The way of water connects all things. After seven weeks atop the box office, Avatar The Way of Water was overtaken by the M. Light Shyamalan thriller Knock at the Cabin. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you to prevent the apocalypse. The horror film with an apocalyptic riff earned 14 points. $2 million in ticket sales at U.S. and Canadian theaters, according to studio estimates. And happy birthday, Axel Rose. The Guns N' Roses frontman is 61 years old. Singer Rick Astley is 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Dave Packer, ABC News. And the time now is 456 and 58 degrees for now. Well, as you know by now, U.S. Air Force jet shot down that Chinese spy balloon off the coast of the Carolinas. So what's next? We'll tell you who's accusing the White House of failing to act quicker. And Apple's getting ready to launch a new iPhone Ultra. Just ahead of Tech Bytes, how it's different from other iPhones and how much it will cost. And checking the roads with Transit Guide, there's one of our foggy shots. That's an I-37 at U.S. Highway 181. Dense fog advisory. We'll catch up with Mike and Steven after the break. Live from Chase at 12.
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Two separate shootings leave two people dead overnight. What San Antonio police are revealing about both incidents just ahead. As Republicans criticize President Biden for his handling of the Chinese spy balloon, new revelations that it happened three times during the Trump administration. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And let's look out there with live cam. Can't see a whole lot. Pretty foggy in this shot. 58 degrees and things are expected to warm up. And a good morning to you. Hope, we hope you had a great weekend. It is Monday, February 6th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, yesterday turned out to be beautiful, especially in the afternoon. Like to keep that trend going. Mike says we have another shot at some rain this week. Yeah, and then jumping back to talking about beautiful weather, that's going to be the end of the week. But uh, first of all, we have to deal with this fog, and that's what it looks like in behind that uh, graphic out there at 10 at 410. Now, granted, that camera's up on top of the building there, but we do have plenty of thick fog around 58 degrees. And then notice the bottom number at 57. So. Dew point, air temperature, neck and neck, 97% humidity and some other factors. And that's why we do have some of this fog around here. A whole bunch more humidity, of course, than what we had yesterday morning. We'll make it up to 75 later on today. Unlike yesterday, we're not going to have just all those beautiful blue skies. going to keep a lot of clouds around. The aquifer did go up three tenths of a foot and the allergens, mountain cedars, moderate mold is on the light side. So plenty of folks do have a lot of very thick fog. It is it's dropped a little bit. Visibility has out there at the airport from eight miles down to five, but now just a quarter mile Port SA still zero Castroville. Keep going out 90 and you've got quarter mile at Hondo. Uvalde, some thick fog heading up new, to New Braunfels out east over toward Gonzales. And then uh, yeah, except for the hill country and the extreme edges around here, the kind of the middle chunk is where all the fog is, and that's where the dense fog advisory is pretty much from Austin along 35 and a couple of counties on either side and then back down to the uh, southwest. That's in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. So it will be very stubborn fog may actually have as we usually do with this low clouds, thick fog, some mist out there. So warm and humid. Then later on today, most of the cloudy skies, very warm mid 70s again. So we're going to be 10 degrees above normal and we'll have a couple of showers trying to move into the area in the overnight hours, but especially later tomorrow, late afternoon and then tomorrow night, even a couple of thunderstorms and that's going to linger into early Wednesday morning. Then another front's going to move on through here, clear us out cold. We get sort of a secondary surge of colder air as well. So beautiful weather does return and some great February temperatures by the end of the week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Good morning, Stephen. How's your weekend? A pretty good weekend, Mike. Hey, no turtlenecks today, but we do have to keep a very close eye on the fog that's in our area. So uh, our friends at Transcott have actually a few camera shots up around the uh, this areas. The areas uh, that we're really seeing that I should say are 37, 35 US 90, as uh, Mike just mentioned uh, during that weather hit. We can pretty much expect that in our viewing area. So again, this is 37 at US 181. Very difficult shot to make out at this point, but I'm not really seeing a lot of traffic out there. And really that goes here in the metropolitan area. Very quiet start to this Monday morning. Folks will be waking up probably in the next hour or so getting ready to hit the roadways, but we'll be keeping a close eye on things, of course, throughout the morning. Let's see if that fog is impacting some of the travel times, though, for those that do have to travel early on 37. It does look like we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown along I-37 northbound. We have a 29 minute drive time. Typically we don't see it uh, that it would take that long, but of course uh, it could be that fog that folks are maybe just taking it slow out on the roads. That's always the best way to go. US 90 30 minutes right now at this hour and that arrival from Lytle should be without within 17 minutes on along I-35 northbound. But let's get back here on Transguide again. I-37 at 181 is just one of the shots where we are locating fog on our Transguide cameras. We're going to keep a close eye on things throughout the morning and we do have several road closures to be on the lookout for that will be coming up in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after he was shot during a car club meetup late last night. Happened around 1030 in the parking lot, in the 700 block of West Loop 1604 North near Petranco on the west side. San Antonio police say after officers initially broke up the meetup in the parking lot at 410 of Marbach, the cars then relocated to the second parking lot. That's where police say a man walked up to one of the cars, knocked on the back window, and shots were fired. A passenger was shot in the head. Police say he was taken to an emergency clinic, but was later pronounced dead by clinical staff. Detectives are now investigating. 
Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a man in his late teens or early 20s is dead after an overnight shooting. This happened around 1 a.m. in the 2400 block of South Calavetas. That is near Frio City Road and Highway 90. Officers were already responding to a shots fired call when they found the man on the ground outside some apartments. He was pronounced dead at the scene by EMS. So far, the San Antonio Police Department reports that it does not have a suspect. However, they are reviewing surveillance video from the apartments. San Antonio police are looking for a suspect in connection to a shooting near Fort Sam Houston. They got several reports of shots fired near Coleman yesterday near North Walters and I-35. Now, police checked that area and found nothing at first, but moments later they found a man shot in the torso just outside the Fort Sam main gate. He was taken to a nearby hospital and is expected to survive. Police believe the man involved in the shoot involved in the uh, the man was involved in the shooting at Coleman Street. This morning, officials in China are condemning the U.S. reaction to that suspected Chinese spy balloon that was shot down over the weekend after it floated over the U.S. for numerous days. As ABC's Faith Abube reports, U.S. Navy divers are working to try to recover debris from the balloon as the Pentagon hopes to get some intelligence information from the payload. This morning, Navy divers urgently trying to recover what's left of a now destroyed Chinese spy balloon after it spent days traversing the U.S. A fighter jet striking the balloon Saturday with a missile. Break one, flash one. That is a key kill. The debris field spread seven miles across shallow waters of the coast of South Carolina. What the Coast Guard is looking for is where is that payload? Where is the metal part of the balloon that was underneath that balloon that holds the sensors? China accusing the U.S. of, quote, excessive reaction to the balloon, claiming it was a civilian airship. Meanwhile, Republicans criticizing the Biden administration say the U.S. should not have allowed the balloon to drift over its airspace for days. I can assure you that if we fly a balloon over China, they're going to shoot it down and probably a lot sooner than we did. Democrats hitting back. I would use two words in answering these GOP criticisms. They are premature and they are political. Our friends are playing politics with U.S. intelligence. Senior Biden administration officials say the military took immediate steps to protect against sensitive military information and that President Biden ordered the balloon to be shut down as soon as it posed no risk to people on the ground. They also reveal that after former President Trump left office, authorities discovered that China used spy balloons over the U.S. at least three times during the Trump administration. Former Trump administration officials, including Trump himself, have denied the claims. And once the Navy divers recover the balloon debris, the FBI is expected to take custody of any components and ship them to a lab in Quantico, Virginia, for intelligence gathering. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. 507, 58 degrees. And are you ready for the iPhone Ultra? Well, we're going to tell you when it can be released and how it's different from all the other iPhones. And up next, the survivor of the Robb Elementary School shooting shares his story during National Gun Violence Survivors Week. And let's look out there with a live cam. Not too bad in this shot, but there's fog uh, across the city and our different trans guy cameras. Be careful out there, we're at 58 degrees. We'll be right back. 511, the survivor, a survivor rather, of the Robb Elementary School shooting is sharing his story during National Gun Violence Survivors Week. It's a time to focus on sharing the stories of survivors and show that gun violence doesn't only affect those who died, but also those who live. Jaden Canizales is 10 years old and a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. He says he has mostly good days and he likes to be called a survivor. Now, by sharing his story, he hopes it will push people to make changes so other kids will not go through what he did. There should be no more guns uh, here or anywhere else because uh, no one no bad people will come to everybody's school. Now, according to Every Town for Gun Safety, National Gun Violence Survivors Week is recognized the first week of February because that time the U.S. has surpassed the number of gun deaths experienced by similar countries in an entire calendar year. 511, 58 degrees. The Twitter charging businesses why Twitter is letting businesses keep their gold check marks, but only for a small price. Plus, why Google Chrome may soon let you delete your last 15 minutes of browsing history. And let's look out there at TransGuide. Okay, you can see the fog here in this shot, I-37 at Loop 410, and similar shots across the city. Be careful out there. We'll be right back.
you start your day defines the rest of it. Start it with Philip Sonicare with expertise and with the total confidence that you've done everything for your health. So you know you will always get it right. Phillips. We're hard at hour one and twice as hard when you take it again the next day. So Betty can be the barcode beat conductor. Go, Betty! Let's be more than our allergies. Seize the day with Zyrtec. Ready to shine from the inside out? Say yes to Nature's Bounty Advanced Gummies and Jelly Beans, the number one brand for hair, skin, and nails, with two times more biotin to bring out more of your inner beauty. Get more with Nature's Bounty. Think he's posting about all that ancient Roman coinage? No. He's making real-time money moves with Merrill. So no matter what the market's doing, he's ready. And that's how you collect coins. Your money never stops working for you with Merrill, a Bank of America company. 515, Apple may release an iPhone Ultra next year, which will be more expensive than the iPhone Pro Max. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple may be looking to add a more expensive option to its upcoming iPhones. Bloomberg reports the company is considering an iPhone 15 Ultra as early as next year. It would be faster, more powerful, and pricier than the Pro and Pro Max. Next, Twitter is reportedly planning to charge businesses $1,000 per month for a gold verification checkmark. The pricey program is said to be an attempt to boost revenue. It's unclear when it will be rolled out. And Google Chrome will soon make it easier to get rid of your browser Browsing history, an option to delete up to 15 minutes of browser information, is coming to Chrome for Android. Now, a similar function was made available last year on the Google app. No word on when it will debut, but we will be sure to keep tabs on it. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Gotta be exhausting yeah, coming up like with those. Yeah, that one was a little bit, I mean. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Weather's coming up. Let's talk traffic. <laughs> All right, lots of fog out there, guys. So, yeah. of course, drive safe. Uh, let's get a quick look around town. Really picking up a lot of the fog um, around the Alamo City. I-37 there, US 81, 181. Pardon me, we showed you that shot a little bit earlier. But let's get a quick peek and see what else drivers uh, have in store for them. 35 North at Loop 410. Not a bad shot there, but even driving along 35 at New Braunfels, you get some of that thick fog that Mike was mentioning. So so just remember to drive safe, take your time, and uh, really there's no other incidents to report at this hour. Things are moving along just fine, and hopefully folks are just taking it easy out on the roadways. Now we get you to the map, and as I mentioned, what we do have in store for us is going to be some of the active construction. You can see a lot of that scattered on our map in and around the Alamo City. One of the spots that we always talk about tends to be here along I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio. We will see some utility work that's going to take place today, and it's actually going to wrap on Thursday, February 9th. So it is overnight, which makes it paramount that you pay attention to the roadways and that you plan your commute ahead of time because crews will be out there from nine in the evening to five in the morning. Watch out because we're going to see a right lane closure on the southbound frontage road of I-35 from Whirlwind Drive to Randolph Boulevard. And I just updated our current list of closures on our website. I hope we can pull that QR code up. There you go. All right, scan that QR code. It'll take you to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of closures on that page, along with any other traffic incidents that may pop up. So know before you go, Mike. Thank you very much. And great picture from over the weekend. We had Saturday morning, we had fog around the area yesterday morning, and then more sunshine in the afternoon. That was beautiful, beautiful picture. Difference. Today being, we've got a lot of fog this morning, but we're not really going to be seeing as much sunshine later on today. This is over there, 10 at 410. Now, of course, this is on top of a building right there at uh, right around 10 at Callahan, and we're looking, you know, somewhere in here is 410, somewhere in here is 10. So it, it's fairly thick fog out there. Five at the airport, uh, visibility has dropped to zero, still at zero, I should say, Castroville. Quarter mile at Port SA, the same thing at New Braunfels and Pleasanton. So no matter what direction you're going, except out toward the Hill Country. Hill Country is not bad right now as far as the uh, visibility. Same thing way off to the west, and that's pretty much about it. So it's this, this middle swath, this middle half, if you will, of the area. It's got the dense fog advisory 
Austin, New Braunfels, San Antonio heading out 90 and uh, some portions of the hill country up until 10 o'clock this morning. So it will be very stubborn fog and of course there may be some damp roads associated with this and with the low clouds, fog, very high humidity, temperatures don't move this morning. Then we will see a little bit of sunshine later on this morning, 68 at noon and top off at 75 degrees. Again, unlike the past couple of days, we keep a lot of clouds around and then going into this evening, especially overnight, there may be one or two little sprinkles. So here's all the clouds that stick around here. And again, this model likes to keep the clouds pretty well just socked in with no sunshine at all. I think, you know, one or two glimpses here and there. And then we get those couple of little sprinkly showers in the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning. But it's not going to be until later on in the day when another front moves on through here. And that's going to be late in the day. And then we'll start to see more rain and even a few thunderstorms. And that front will continue to progress eastward. And that's where when it gets further off to the east, that's going to be the best opportunity to see anything potentially severe. Just a couple of isolated strong to severe storms. One or two of them in our eastern counties, but more as you head over in toward Houston. Again, that's going to be late tomorrow night. And as far as the humidity, dew points remain very high all the way through today, all the way through tomorrow, feeding some of that rain. But then here comes the next front, and that's going to work through here overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. And that's going to bring in some beautiful weather and temperatures go from 75 down to 65 Thursday, even upper 50s on Friday and low temperatures. Yep, we're looking at another freezing reading around here by Saturday morning. So not bad forecast, really. I mean, even though it's very, very warm, very unseasonable, at least we have those rain chances coming in here the next couple of days. 68 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 75, so roughly 20, or excuse me, roughly 10 above normal, beg your pardon. And then tomorrow, we'll have a couple of showers around here. One or two of them may be late tonight, but the better chance of rain tomorrow, especially later on in the day, a couple of thunderstorms around there, and that's going to be as the next front moves on through here. We'll start off uh, at 48 on Wednesday morning, only make it up to 65, a normal high temperature, same thing on Thursday, and then sort of a reinforcing shot of some colder air comes in here Friday into Saturday. I'm just so happy that the weather worked out well for the parade and cattle drive for you yeah. guys. Said. Yeah, I, it, I had said that on the air too. It's like a couple of days ago. It's like, whoa. So yeah, it was very cold out there, but folks just had a great time. It That's was good. so wonderful to see everything. And David and Ursula were on the KZ yeah. Insider Wagon yeah. with some insiders that, that won that. So everybody looked like extras on Yellowstone. It was awesome. <laughs> and, and of course, rodeo kicks off Thursday. Yes, it okay. does. Here we go San Antonio 522 58 degrees. Yes, it was a big winner at the 65th Grammy Awards. Up next, how she broke the record for the most Grammy wins of all time. And here are your lottery numbers this morning. Don't forget the big uh, jackpot tonight. Pick three numbers 501 Fireball 2. Daily four numbers 5093 Fireball 2. Cash 5 1 4 17 32 33. Lotto Texas 16 26 30 31 37 44. And your Powerball number is 2, 8, 15, 19, 58, Powerball 10, Power Play 2. Good luck. 525, Beyonce made history at the 65th Grammy Awards. CNN's Rick Domagilla has a story and a look at the big winners in the Hollywood Minute. Because we are witnessing history tonight. <laughs> Breaking the record for the most Grammy wins of all time. And the Grammy goes to Beyonce with her win for Best Dance Electronic Music Album for Renaissance, the singer-songwriter's 32nd career Grammy surpassed classical music icon Sir George Schulte for the most Grammy Award wins of all time. I'm trying not to be too emotional. And I'm trying to just receive this night. She came into the awards with nine nominations, more than any other artist winning four. An icon who won a Grammy earlier today, which means she's officially an EGOT, Viola Davis. The night also crowned the latest EGOT winner as Viola Davis won Best Audiobook, Narration and Storytelling Recording for Finding Me. Davis is just the 18th person to win all four major entertainment honors. Brandi Carlisle won a trio of trophies, as did Bonnie Raitt, who looked around in disbelief at winning Song of the Year for Just Like That. I don't write a lot of songs, but I'm so proud that you appreciate this one. 
You changed my life. You, you sang that gospel medley, and the way you made me feel, I was like, I want to make people feel this way with my music. Lizzo spent a portion of her acceptance speech for Record of the Year thanking Beyonce. By just being myself, by just being who I was born as, it's just, I'm, I'm so thankful. Jazz singer Samara Joy took home Best Jazz Vocal Album and the coveted Best New Artist Grammy. You can read it. <laughs> Harry Styles! The night's final award saw Harry Styles, who'd already won Best Pop Vocal Album, winning Album of the Year for Harry's House. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. It truly really seemed like some of those folks were surprised. Yeah, I was like, well, don't they know that they're pretty popular? I, mean, I guess they do now. <laughs> right now we're at 527, 58 degrees. And top leaders in Washington are finally getting some more information on that Chinese spy balloon that was shot down over the weekend. Find out what Representative Joaquin Castro is saying about the situation so far. A major video game company known for games like Call of Duty is accused of workplace misconduct. How much the company is having to pay and why it's not admitting fault. A lot of big changes are coming to the San Antonio Zoo. We're going to tell you what will be available after all the construction is completed. Opinions are mixed on how the Biden White House dealt with the suspected Chinese spy balloon. Just ahead, what we know about a special meeting as top leaders in Washington still try to figure out exactly what the heck happened. And it's still foggy out there looking out with live cam. I don't even know where this shot is, but you can barely see anything. And that's kind of true for a lot of our trans guide cameras out there. My guess, that's airports uh, okay. right there at 410 right now. Hard to see. 10 I-10. That was 10 I-10? 10 I-10. Okay, wow, I was good. off by, yeah. I, I was close. I was really close <laughs> by about five miles. That look mysterious to me. Good morning, everybody. It's <laughs> Monday. It is February 6th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, we're going to have to deal with the fog for quite a while. Yeah, the dense fog advisory is in effect up until 10 o'clock. Again, not everybody is seeing real thick stuff, but in some places, especially uh, heading out toward 9, it's getting very thick. Now, this camera, of course, is on top of that building over there at 10 at 410. The uh, traffic you can kind of see right here. This is westbound 10 heading out of, there you go, heading out of town. Medical Center is right back out this way, and uh, 10 would be just about in there. So now, Again, this building's a couple of hundred feet up, but at the surface, we still have plenty of fog. And the reason being, temperature 58, dew point 57. Those two numbers are neck and neck. A little bit of a light breeze out there, and that's what helps out with all this fog. And everybody's in the mid and upper 50s as of right now, with the exception of Uvalde. Visibility its actually improved, though, in Casterville, now up to three quarters of a mile. Been holding at zero for the longest time. Quarter mile, Port S.A., Stinson, Pleasanton, and going up to uh, New Braunfels. Burning stage, some fog. Kerrville's still not bad and further out in the hill country. But again, Uvalde's got fog, and then down to the uh, southeast. Dense fog advisory for the kind of the, the middle chunk of our viewing area all the way from Austin back down to the uh, southwest. And that's in effect, like I said, up until 10 o'clock. So it's going to be very stubborn. There probably is going to be some mist and some damp roads here and there. So watch that as you're driving this morning. Mountain cedars on the moderate side, mold low. And throughout the rest of today, 68 at noon, we'll see some sunshine, but we're not going to clear out as much as we did the past couple of days after foggy starts both Saturday and Sunday mornings. And then high temperature today very warm up to 75 southeasterly wind somewhat breezy here and there a couple of sprinkles are going to be possible tonight then some rain chances then another couple of fronts to clear us on out and get us back down to uh, February temperatures. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything on the roads going on? You, I haven't spotted anything yet, Mike, uh, but let's get a look here at the TransGuide cameras because you can see that maybe just a few more folks out there, 37 at Southeast Military, but uh, as we've been showing you here on the TransGuide cameras, a lot of that fog is showing up in parts of our viewing area. So remember, take it slow. Use those low beams here in town, but you can see 35 at Cesar Chavez. Things are moving along really just fine, but uh, 37 at Fair Avenue. That's where we're seeing a little bit more of a uh, uh, condition. The conditions are looking like a little foggy out there. Do want to get your attention here to Seguin Road at Loop 410. You may see this crash around the area. Uh, this is a spot where we're also picking up a little bit of that fog on the transguide cameras, but I've not seen any flashing lights out there, so that could still be a crash off of the highway. But nonetheless, make sure that you watch out as you get the morning rolling here. Wide look at the map really doesn't show any slowdowns. Only that one incident that we are tracking right now here 
in the traffic lab. But if you're going to be traveling this early, make sure that you plan ahead because we're already seeing just a minor slowdown along I-10 in those west along those westbound lanes. Pardon me if you're traveling in from Seguin, but thankfully you're still in the green. 30 minutes right now to the Alamo City, about 33 minutes if you are traveling in 80 along 87 northbound heading in from Lavernia, and it's about a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. But let's get you back here on the rotation, show you what the commute looks like here in town. 35 at San Marcos, thankfully no major issues in that particular spot of town. 410 West at Cherry Ridge, things look fine there as well. But again, we're going to see a lot of that fog as Mike mentioned throughout the morning. So we are going to keep a close eye on the roadways for you right here on GMSA. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. A gang of eight briefing on the Chinese balloon incident may happen as soon as tomorrow. In addition to the top leaders in both chambers and key intelligence committee members getting more information on the matter, a full Senate classified briefing is scheduled for later next week, according to a congressional source. CNN's John Lawrence reports. The suspected spy balloon from China is grounded for good. According to a senior U.S. military official, a single missile brought the balloon down Saturday and the debris is in 47 feet of water spread out over seven miles. Clearly, this was an attempt by China to gather information to defeat our command and control of our sensitive missile defense and nuclear weapon sites. President Joe Biden declared the takedown a success. The president called for this to be dealt with in a way that uh, balanced all of the different risks. That's exactly what happened. Military did a terrific job. President Biden was decisive. He took the military's advice that the best time to do it, uh, mostly because of public safety, was when this thing was over water and it was taken out. But some Republicans say the balloon should have been brought down sooner. He allowed a full week for the Chinese to conduct spying operations over the United States, over sensitive military installations. I think this entire episode uh, telegraphed weakness to Xi and the Chinese government. The Chinese government issued a statement Sunday expressing, quote, strong dissatisfaction and protest against Washington's actions, adding that the airship was for civilian use and had entered the U.S. airspace by accident. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, this morning, thousands of people in Austin are still without power after last week's ice storm. According to Austin Energy's outage map, there's still more than 1,200 active outages affecting about 27,000 customers. Crews have already restored power to more than 62,000 customers. Austin Energy says it's added additional contractors and mutual aid crews to help. It says it hopes to restore power to nearly all remaining customers by this coming Sunday, February 12th. The majority of Democrats now think one term is plenty for President Joe Biden. That's despite his insistence that he plans to seek re-election in 2024. That's according to a new poll from the Associated Press, NORC Center for Public Affairs Research. Now, it shows just 37 percent of Democrats say they want Biden to seek a second term. That is down from 52 percent in the weeks before last year's midterm elections. While Biden has trumpeted his legislative victories and ability to govern, the polls suggest relatively few U.S. adults give him high marks on either. Big news overseas this morning. A second 7.6 magnitude earthquake has struck southeastern Turkey. That's after an initial 7.8 quake that hit the region earlier today. So far, more than 1,200 people have been killed and hundreds more are hurt. The toll is expected to rise throughout the day and this week as rescuers search for dead and survivors in dozens of collapsed buildings across that region. First quake felt as far away as Cairo, Egypt, was centered about 20 miles from a major Turkish city and has caused damage across southern Turkey and government-held parts of Syria. And the time now is 538 and 58 degrees for now. Workers at Disney fighting for more fair wages. Why Disney says it's already paying their workers enough. And new construction at the San Antonio Zoo. Up next, we're going to tell you about all the changes and new attractions coming to one of the favorite spots in the Alamo City. As we start off your Monday morning, what to wear this morning? And what about the rest of the week? We'll get to your weather planner going with meteorologist Mike Osterhage coming up. Welcome back 541. The San Antonio Zoo is a staple family friendly of fun of family friendly friendly fun in and around San Antonio. And there are big changes on the way. The zoo CEO joined leading SA this past weekend to talk about what we can expect. 
Tim Morrow joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about the new construction, the new experiences all coming to the San Antonio Zoo. We talked about the new entrances and how it's gonna be more representative of San Antonio. And we talked about what people can expect in just the next few months. Take a listen to the conversation. They should see a new front gate this year. So we're really excited about opening that around Christmas time, around the beginning of our Zoo Lights program. The other big thing we have coming online is gorillas. We haven't had a gorilla at San Antonio Zoo since 1991. Uh, we're building a very large habitat, actually designed as the largest habitat in the country. So uh, we're hoping to have up to 10 or 12 gorillas. Uh, I'm really excited about that. That should open early 2025. And then the Kronkowski Tiny Time Nature Spot and our new Butterfly House are opening now. So people can come during spring break or this month and start to experience those things. But lots of big changes coming to the zoo. And of course, we had to talk about the intriguing Valentine's Day events. You can find our full discussion right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. All right, thanks, Max. Time now, 542 and 58 degrees. A video game giant known for making popular games like Call of Duty reaches an agreement after misconduct complaints. Why well, the company says it's not an admission of fault. Oh, let's look at the roads with TransGuide. Again, the issue this morning in some areas, fog. You can see in some of these cameras, like I-35, they're at I-37. And also at I-35 at Cesar Chavez. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 545 in your morning consumer headlines. Unionized workers at Disney World have rejected a new contract proposal from the company. The rejected contract would have given the workers at least a dollar an hour raise each year for the next five years. Now, the unions say the offer is not enough due to rising rents and other costs in the Orlando area. Disney argues 46 percent of cast members would have gotten more than a dollar an hour raise in the contract's first year. Those who would have worked under the contract represent more than 40 percent of all workers at Disney World, including <coughs> 75,000 cast members. Negotiations on a new union contract are still ongoing and have been since August. Video game giant Activision Blizzard has reached a $35 million settlement with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The company will pay to settle U.S. government allegations that it violated a whistleblower protection rule and lacked processes to collect workplace misconduct complaints. The agreement is the latest blow to the embattled publisher, which has faced widespread criticism over numerous allegations of sexual harassment, retaliation, and other workplace misconduct. The company settlement with the SEC is not an admission of fault. Activision Blizzard is known for some of its most popular game titles, including Call of Duty, Overwatch, and Candy Crush. And it's still kind of foggy out there. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Right, and I think that it's uh, probably going to stick around like that for a while, as Mike will probably tell you. But uh, let's get a look there at 35 and really just seeing a little bit more traffic that's picking up there, guys. And really, uh, you want to watch out this morning. We have a lot of fog in our area, and it's not really causing any issues in terms of the commute just yet, but it is still very early in the morning, so things are expected to change as the hours do roll by. But we're going to keep a close eye on the roadways, but thankfully, no major issues to report at this hour. Now, I did mention that we had a crash earlier here along Seguin road uh, FM 78 at loop 410 that's already cleared out so we don't have to worry about that anymore let me jump back to the map and give you a wider look now at the metropolitan area and really this is what we see at this time a lot of green and a few construction spots to be on the lookout for now if you are traveling along 281 we already know it's a pretty busy commute so this will probably make it a little bit more uh, complicated for drivers that don't have that patience but you got to watch out there because we do have some asphalt work taking place later today and in fact this is going to take place throughout the week at different times, but we're going to see part of that start today at 9 a.m. should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. Uh, if you're driving along 281, watch out because you're going to see some alternating lane closures in both directions right there at Borkville Drive. So just again, our road, pardon me, but yeah, again, just plan your commute ahead of time. Head over to KSAT.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there. But for right now, the commute is calm, just a little foggy out there. Thank you for the update, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And well, it will stay a little or a lot foggy for mm -hmm. next few hours yeah. up until mid morning. So all the way through the morning commute, if you have fog right now, so, and also watch out for some damp roads too. Yep. So did you get outside yesterday? It was beautiful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. Absolutely had to. <laughs> Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah, it was absolutely <laughs> gorgeous out there. A nice little day for a stroll along Woodlawn Lake. When did you go work for uh, Bush's Baked Beans? Right. Ah. 
No, yeah. it just, when the shoe fits, it, right? So, pardon me? When the shoe fits. It's exactly. Okay. So, uh, or the bean fits, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was gorgeous yesterday. A little, you know, even get out, do a little yard work. Fantastic. Today's not going to be as pretty. Not starting off as pretty, obviously. There's some of the traffic. This is westbound 10. You can see the headlights coming at us. So 10 at 410. And very foggy, obviously up high on top of that building. Five miles visibility at the airport. But notice how it's kind of surrounded now. we got this little hole right there in the airport. This may start to close in. One mile Bernie stage, mile and a third at Randolph, quarter mile Stinson, Castroville, Pleasanton, Hondo, and a lot of fog heading out toward Uvalde and then down to the southwest and not bad out to the northwest and not bad right there along the coast. So it's that center section of the of the area where we have the dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning. Like I said, maybe a little bit of even some damp roads out there with the low clouds, with the high humidity, fog temperatures aren't going anywhere so we'll stay mid upper 50s a little bit of sunshine is going to try and squeeze through late this morning make it up to 68 degrees at noon and then top off at 75 later on today bit of a breeze out of the south 15 20 miles per hour maybe a gust here and there and this model doesn't even give us any sunshine today, but I think there'll be a couple of squirts here and there, and we will have a few little sprinkly showers trying to show up then as we go into the evening and overnight hours and tomorrow morning. But it looks like any decent rain is really going to hold off until the afternoon and going into tomorrow evening as the next front moves on through here. And as that comes on in and works its way off to the east, this is going to try and touch off a couple of uh, thunderstorms and even a couple of stronger thunderstorms. Most of those would be further off to the east, but our we, eastern counties are kind of on the, the western edge of this area where Storm Prediction Center has an isolated strong to potentially severe storm. But again, most of those are going to be further off to the east over there toward Houston. Now, as far as the dew point trends, we do have the front coming through tomorrow into Wednesday. So all this higher humidity gets pushed on out of here. We get a sort of a reinforcing shot of it coming in for Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Then the humidity is going to try and work its way back on in here as we go into the first part of the week. So there's the rain chance. And then right now it looks like got another rain chance going into, like I said, the first of next week. Forecast around here today, a lot of fog hanging around this morning, and we'll see limited sunshine, 68 degrees today at noon. Then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 75, about 10 above normal. Tomorrow, just a couple of sprinkles around the area, one or two of them around tonight, and then we'll have a uh, shower or two in the afternoon hours, most of the rain is going to be into the evening and even a couple of those thunderstorms. One or two of those could be on the strong side, especially off to the east. A couple of fronts move through here, clears out Wednesday and then give us a, a reinforcing shot of colder air. So we'll be down only in the upper 50s with plenty of sunshine on Friday and then down to 32 on Saturday. Yeah, I think every morning everybody's going, which jacket do yeah. I wear? <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And again, on say Wednesday and Thursday, you won't need a jacket in the afternoon. Friday, maybe, mm -hmm. and Saturday with the cloud cover, perhaps. So you're yeah. just going to have to remind us morning of. Stuff okay? everything in the backseat. Yeah, yeah, just be prepared. We will. F 552, 58 degrees. Grief can be tough to tackle, whether it's your own or someone else's. Up next, a new streaming series looks at the unexpected connections that can form after a tragedy. Your lottery numbers pick three, five, zero, one, fireball two, daily four, five, zero, nine, three, fireball two. Cash five, one, four, 17, 32, 33. Model taxes, 16, 26, 30, 31, 37, 44. And your Powerball numbers, two, eight, 15, 19, 58, Powerball 10, power play two. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the breaking news from overseas, the devastating earthquake that has killed hundreds in Turkey and Syria. We're going to have the latest on that. And the fallout after the Chinese spy balloon was shot down over the weekend and what it could mean for relations with China. Those stories and so much more coming up right here on GMA. People meet me and they think she's the woman whose nephew survived the plane crash. But they forget I'm also 
woman who lost my big sister. Taylor Schilling, Cullen O'Brien, and Connie Britton lead the cast of Dear Edward, based on the best-selling novel. So courageously, Lacey lets go of one idea of what she thinks life is going to be and fully embraces what is in front of her. And I found her, I mean, there's so much celebration in that. I think it's fascinating always to see the experience that people have when their lives are just blown apart and how that sort of forces you to see who you really are. I know you want to run away. I want to run away too. But life has to go on. There's something about grief that makes you really brave because you've lost it all. And you're like, well, let me just go do the thing that I've always wanted to do but I've always been afraid to do. My grandmother paved the way. And there is no one more committed to carrying on her legacy than I am. I think it's really important to open the door for people to talk about it because I think so often we freeze up when somebody's gone through a loss and the whole idea is like not to mention it when actually people want to talk about it. It kind of travels and uh, follows how these characters find hope and redefine themselves through community and friends and new connections and how they move past the grief um, through other people. After I got to 200 I lost count. Is everyone writing to him? Because he survived. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. February is here. If you're looking for something fun to do, you're in luck. We've got a whole list of a lot of fun activities posted on our website. That includes a San Antonio Coffee Festival. I'm going to that one. Natural Bridge Caverns Trail Run. And of course, the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Just look for this article over on ksat.com to read more about all the February fun to come. We'll still come on the next hour of GMSA this morning. San Antonio police say a man is dead after he was shot during a car club meetup late last night. We'll have an update. And checking Transguide on the lookout for fog. Dense fog advisory in effect for many of our KSAT 12 counties. We'll talk to Stephen and Mike to, uh, coming up.